Yo, proposal number 69 on the Cosmos Hub is currently causing a lot of debates between the community, but also between core developers in the Cosmos ecosystem, such as Jack Zempelin, Billy Renekamp, Zaki Manian, as well as Jay Kwan. In today's video, I want to tell you what this proposal is all about, why it's so spicy and causing a lot of debates, and also what my personal views are, as well as what we are going to do with Stake Cito, as we are one of the validators on the Cosmos Hub Atom. Now, the proposal is about implementing Cosm Wasm onto the Cosmos Hub. And I think before we get into the proposal itself, we should maybe talk a little bit about the role of the Cosmos Hub and the general architecture of Cosmos, because I think especially for newcomers, it's very important to understand this. So in Cosmos, you have the premise that we're building the internet of blockchains. This means that every single application, every single chain in Cosmos is sovereign and running on its own chain, right? You have the Cosmos Hub, which is a chain on which Atom is residing. You have Osmosis, which is the best AMM in the world on which Osmo is residing, as well as Ion, right? Then you have Juno, which is a Cosmosm implemented smart contract platform on which Juno is running. So you have all these sovereign chains and the way they scale and the way they communicate to each other is through what's called IBC, the Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol. It creates compatibility and seamless uh, connection between all those sovereign blockchains, right? Now, does that mean that in Cosmos we don't have smart contracts? No, of course not. The Confio team, which is funded by the Interchain Foundation, developed the Cosmosm framework, which is um, the most predominant smart contract platform in Cosmos as of today. Juno was the first project to implement it and was the first one to take it mainstream, um, as well as other uh, ecosystems like Terra, they have it implemented, Osmosis is going to implement it, even Stargaze and other projects in the Cosmos ecosystem. So the thing is, implementing new features as big as a smart contract platform might pose new risks, right? So that's why the question is, if you would implement this on the Cosmos Hub, would that change the purpose of the Cosmos Hub? Would it change the direction? And would it pose more risks to the hub, right? That's the core question of why this proposal is so spicy. And we're also gonna look into, uh, in a second, into the proposal in detail proposed by Billy Renekamp, who is the Cosmos Hub lead from the Interchain Foundation. But let me tell you this, from my perspective, the Cosmos Hub is going to be predominantly a security source for other chains. What does that mean? It means that it is robust, decentralized, and valuable enough to become a security source. Security source means that either new or existing app-specific blockchains can rent security from, in this case, the Cosmos Hub, right? Polkadot with a relay chain model and Kusama were kind of like the first ones to put that into production where new chains and their communities can bid to get uh, security from the relay chain. The Cosmos Hub is going to take a very similar route um, as proposed by Informal Systems, which is a company led by Ethan Buckman, one of the two co-founders besides Jay Kwan to create Cosmos in the first place. Um, he's also, by the way, the president of the Interchain Foundation. And the Cosmos Hub is kind of like in this process right now, to become the ultimate security provider so that new or existing blockchains can pack to the Cosmos app and don't have to set up their own validator set. Instead, they are pegging to the Cosmos hub and renting security from the Cosmos hub, which means that Atom validators are also validating blocks and secure the blockchain on the consumer chain, which is how it is going to be called. This does not only add more kind of like value to the Cosmos Hub as its own chain um, in terms of also like the validators because they're now um, having multiple hats on, um, but it also introduces a lot of utility for the Atom, which is what a lot of people have complained about in the past few months. Because if you are an Atom delegator and you stake your Atom to a validator and this validator validates blocks on another chain, on a consumer chain, you're also earning staking rewards from that other chain because that other chain will still have their own native token and that native token 
is used as an economic incentive for the validators on the Cosmos Hub to provide security. This concept is really amazing. It's already being built and will hopefully be implemented in the next three to six months, at least the first version of it, right? I also made an interview with the Quicksilver team. They're going to be launching partner of Interchain Security. And that's a really interesting thing. Now, with that said, and I think it's important that I brought this up, this is what most people in the Cosmos ecosystem and also Cosmos Hub developers are aligned, that this is going to be the predominant value accrual and predominant unique selling point for the Cosmos Hub. Now, with that in mind, why do we need Cosmwasm? Cosmwasm is a smart contract platform that doesn't really add value to interchange security, at least in the first glance, right? Maybe down the road, there are some use cases that might be easier to implement if the Cosmos Hub would have Cosmwasm. If we go on mintscan.io and actually take a look at the proposal, which is um, running until the 13th of May. So we still have a couple of days to take our vote. And remember the way Cosmos governance works. If you delegate to a validator and that validator votes and you disagree with this validator's vote, you can outvote him by just voting yourself, right? You can do it through Kepler. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, keep in mind, this is also just a signaling proposal on whether to include Cosmwasm, um, which basically means that this is just a question to Atom holders. Hey guys, do you think we should implement it before we take the hustle and actually prepare everything and then ask you guys, hey, it's ready now, do we implement it? No, this is like before the hard work is being taken. Now, the current turnout is that 33% of the Atom stakers have voted, right? 60 million out of 181 million eligible Atom people have voted. The quorum is 40%, so we still need 6.78%. Uh, um, and currently, it looks like the community is heavily against it. 71% um, are against it, and 14% are for it. And also, more than 10% voted for no with veto. And we might look into it in a second why that is. If you scroll down here, you can also see what the validators voted for. You can see who voted for yes, right? Stranger of Ventures, which is the uh, validator run by uh, um, uh, Jack Samplin. Then you have also Audit One from the Persistence team. You have P2P, which is basically the Lido team, right? Um, and then you have a lot of uh, validators that are against it, such as Dokia Capital, Game. Uh, Chorus one that have also been around for many years. And currently with Stakesito, we have voted for abstain simply because we're um, observing the discussions. We're also internally discussing with the team um, what is the smartest choice here. So that's why as of now, we're still abstaining. But now let's look into more detail um, how this proposal is going to affect the Cosmos Hub. Billy Rennekamp, the Cosmos Hub product lead and the Interchain GmbH um, is the author of this proposal. And he's also a strong advocate of implementing it, right? And here are basically the two benefits that he sees on why implementing Cosmosm on the Cosmos Hub makes sense. Number one, it lowers the burdens on validators and maintainers for new Cosmos Hub features. And I think this is also the core argument of Jack Sampolin on why he's in favor of implementing Cosmosm. If we implemented Cosmosm on the Hub, it's possible for anyone who writes a smart contract to add functionality to the Cosmos Hub, right? So this sentence alone is a very strong argument on why implementing Cosmosm on the hub makes sense, simply because adding codes uh, to the hub is much more easier. And the second point um, why implementing Cosmosm on the uh, hub makes sense is because it lowers the barrier for contributions so that things like, for example, DAO implementations like DAODAO are much easier to be implemented on the Cosmos hub, which again creates more utility of the hub itself and more functionality and more flexibility. Um, so there's a couple of examples of apps that could run um, on the Cosmos Hub and easily be integrated through Cosmwasm. Now, what are the risks and drawbacks of implementing Cosmwasm onto the Cosmos Hub? There's actually two of them. The first one is the burden to upkeep, and the second one is short-term compatibility concerns, right? So the first one, burden to upkeep basically means that um, it's not that easy. It's a non-insignificant amount of work to maintain the compatibility with Cosmwasm. One thing is to implement it. 
Another thing is to maintain it and to make sure it doesn't have any bugs and is running smoothly, right? But at the same time, Billy's also saying that he doesn't think that this is a crazy burden on behalf of the Cosmos Hub team at the Interchange GmbH. And he thinks it's technically feasible to include Cosmosm in the row upgrade and also to maintain it. And the second concern, and this is probably one that for most people is the uh, killer argument against implementing Cosmosm, is the short-term compatibility concern, which basically means that there are some concerns that this might eventually cause some bugs on the Cosmos Hub, right? And this obviously at this stage, in my opinion at least, would be fatal, would be essential if there was a bug on the Cosmos Hub, similar to what we had on Juno, right? Juno went down for a couple of days because there was a vulnerability that was being attacked. Um, it didn't get exploited, but it was attacked. And if uh, the Cosmos Hub would have this uh, scenario where it would be down for a few days, I think this would be an extremely, extremely negative uh, condemnation that comes with it. So um, I'm not too sure if the risks here are completely clear in terms of the short-term compatibility. But if we look into um, what Zaki says, uh, who is the creator of the liquid staking module, his predominant case for implementing Cosmosm on the hub is that the Cosmos hub would be the premier synthetic asset uh, place for Atom um, for the users of the liquid uh, staking module as proposed by Occlusion, right? And Lido, who is running the biggest ETH derivative, staking derivative in the world and gained massive, massive traction, they want to be the first operator to issue from the hub itself. So he's basically saying, if we don't do it on the Cosmos hub, somebody else will do it, right? Uh, he, he thinks that implementing liquid staking fixes a lot of the Atom tokenomics fixes a lot of the utility in Cosmos, on the Cosmos Hub, and that's why he's strongly in favor of doing it. However, it's also important to mention that Quicksilver is also going to implement the uh, liquid staking module, and Quicksilver also uh, plans to implement interchange security, which basically means they're still adding value to Atom, so they're a shared secured zone of the Cosmos Hub. I think personally, it's uh, great that they are doing this and it still adds a lot of value to Atom. But as Zaki is saying, it's good to have multiple paths to success instead of betting on one technical direction. Now, I also just made a poll about whether or not the Twitter community believes we should implement Cosmwasm. More than 2000 people have voted and 72%, which is pretty similar to the actual vote on the Cosmos Hub right now, has said, no, we don't need this. And I offered in that, in that thread to host a, um, constructive debate on a live stream here on my Twitter channel with the core uh, proponents, but also the people that are against it, right? So Jay Kwan, as well as uh, Jacob Gedikian, and also uh, Peng Zhang from uh, Ignite, they're strongly against implementing it because they believe it will add too much complexity and too many risks and potentially kill Atom in its original purpose. Whereas Saki, Billy, and Jack, for the reasons I already mentioned, Implementing codes get easier, um, positioning the hub as a liquid staking uh, center gets easier and basically adds a lot of utility for Atom. Um, but still, we will love to host this conversation with the core contributors here, also with Ethan Frey from Cosmosm, as well as um, Ethan Buckman, who is the other co-founder of Cosmos. Um, but I think it's gonna be really hard to get all of them in one show. Now let's actually read through some of the comments here because it's actually really great constructive feedback also from you guys from the community. White Marlin is saying, after watching Bankless episode with Ethan, I'm convinced more than ever that shared security or interchange security will be the killer app for the Cosmos Hub. Cosmosm would distract from that model, in my opinion. Need to get that up and running as soon as feasible. Jack Sample in response, however, it won't distract. It's a diff. Cosmosm on the Hub is a great idea. Manimo87 is also saying, maybe not yet. I think the hub is really, really valuable for staying focused on security. Paul is saying, I abstained, I don't understand it. And I think a lot of people are in that field, which is why I also want to make this video. Zero Expander is saying, for me, it is not for now. Let's focus on getting interchange staking out first and then properly plan. And I think this is a very interesting thought to say, hey, maybe it's too early at this point but let's wait for interchange security to ship and then we can reevaluate and maybe have a clearer use case, which because I think right now the predominant use case for it is um, to have liquid staking as proposed by Zekimanian um, and also the Lido team, which would come over 
um, and potentially add a lot of value to Atom. Deepak is saying, not sure, can you decode this in your video? I hope that's what I'm doing right now. So please let me know if um, this video helps you. Um, and then people start to talk about Jaquan and I'm getting into this right now, why people are talking about Jaquan so much. Jaquan, the uh, inventor of Tendermint came out um, and is strongly, strongly against it because he believes in hub minimalism, which means that you don't have features on the Cosmos Hub that might pose additional risks. And Rob Inwood tweeted, it's not, no, we don't need this. It's no, I want to be eligible for the GNO airdrop. And Jack Zampolin is really, really um, against this idea because he thinks as a community, we should actively discourage this type of vote buying by voting against proposal where this is occurring. Now let's actually look into what this means if you're completely puzzled right now on what I'm talking right now. So Jay Kwan is working on no land, which is a Go or no compatible smart contract platform that is going to be rolled out in the next couple of months. I just had an interview with him on my channel, so please go check that out. And he basically came out and said, vote no with veto on adding Wasm and thus making the hub more centralized and insecure when Wasm isn't needed. The whole point of IBC is to allow us to offload complexity to other zones, whether independent like Osmosis or with replicated security. The point of the hub is to be a simple token hub with governance for many zones that Atom secured. Um, and, and a similar view is also uh, presented by Jihan, who is from the informal systems team and leads basically the uh, interchain security pro um, implementation on the Cosmos Hub. And he's saying, on the balance, it would be better to wait three months for interchain security to bring Cosmwasm to the hub. If a Cosmwasm consumer chain halts, it won't affect the hub. So that's Jihan's view, and Jay retweeted it. And then Jay started to tweet about an exit drop, and this is what most people are now considering actually to do. And then he said that on May 19th, which previously was July 4th, Independence Day is coming sooner this year, which basically means that he's going to do a snapshot of the Atom chain and Atom holders and stakers and distribute the new token, not of the Nolan project to um, Atom stakers and uh, holders. And potentially is also going to distribute tokens to people that voted either no or even no with veto on proposal number 69. And then he's saying, instead of trying to convince those that are um, working on these things, he's going to declare independence with no land and going to have his own platform um, while he's excluding the ICF and AIB, which is basically Ignite today. Um, they won't be part of the exit drop. He will build a separate DAO and incentive system. And um, the 19th of May is going to be the snapshot date. Vote no with veto. One third veto will kill the proposal. It is the best exit option. So he's basically saying that um, potentially, or he's basically alluding to that potentially, if you vote no with veto on this proposal, you um, potentially get more not tokens, which a lot of people obviously are um, airdrop hundreds these days. Um, they don't even know what all this is about. So this is kind of like a very, very, very sensitive way and a very tricky way to get people um, to vote for no with veto. And that's also why core contributors like Jack Sampolin have said, man, you're buying votes. Like, you know, that's against the purpose of a democratic open system. But since it's open, anybody can do whatever they want. After all, what's my personal view on this proposal? Um, personally, I'm very much on the camp to say, hey, let's rather wait a couple of more months to see how interchain security gains traction and how it will take off before we add Cosmosm to the hub. Billy Renekam also posted a thread about this and how he says that, you know, um, it's two routes that you can take. The one that adds value to Atom fast is by implementing Cosmosm to the hub. Josh Lee, by the way, also said that um, not implementing it would be a missed chance. But on the other hand, interchain security, and that's where everybody's aligned, is going to be the killer application for the Cosmos Hub. However, it's still a couple of months down the road and it might cause a delay in the value accrual for Atom, which could also mean that the Atom would lose value and lose traction. My final thought is that um, I'm personally voting for no against this proposal because I think it's probably too early to um, implement this feature. Let's wait for interchain security to come. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe it helps you to take a smarter decision on that proposal. I'll see you guys in the next video.
Take care, stay safe, and be good.